YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Let's talk about the stock price predictions for Palantir. Looking into October 21st through the 25th. Along with that, we're going to be talking about Palantir's valuation and if this stock is overvalued, as many people seem to believe that this stock is. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Please hit that like button as we continue to grow the channel. Now, I stumbled upon something that kind of caught my attention uh, a couple of days ago, and it pretty much goes into the valuation of Palantir, which a lot of people view at this point as con controversial. And so it goes like this. Palantir is a controversial stock with value investors debating that it is overpriced and growth investors debating that there is still untapped potential. And this person says that they lean toward the former view and they believe the stock has run ahead of itself especially when considering the future growth expectations from street expectations. Now, while Palantir's strong operational track record and increasing demand for AIP could position a company to beat those street expectations, the stock doesn't present a good risk reward profile at its current valuation levels if things don't go as planned. This is according to this person, not me. Now, they say recent developments such as Peter Thiel's filing to sell up to $1 billion in Palantir shares add to the growing signs that the stock is overvalued and poised for a correction. Now, from this perspective, I would say that maybe the stock does make a correction, especially as we stated before, when we look into the PE ratio, which is extremely high, but also like I stated before too, when it comes to tech stocks, sometimes these PE ratios run a little bit crazy. Um, and as far as the whole Peter Thiel situation goes, look, I mean, if you've got $1 billion that you can cash out on, would you not do that? Does that not make sense? Now, I'm more than sure that he's not selling all of his shares. He's just taking, you know, a lump sum and, and taking his profits, right? Why wouldn't you do that? Now, it goes on to say this. Um, the strong financial performance amid the AI surge. It says Palantir's Q2 uh, 24 earnings reported total revenue of 27% year over year reaching $678 million overperforming street expectations. And then they go on and mention the government contracts that made up 55% of the total revenue. Now, they go also on to a growing deal flow and operating efficiency. And it says Palantir's ability to close new deals has been improving consistently over the last five quarters. Deals worth at least $1 billion have increased with 10 million plus deals showing the most growth momentum. Now, in the latest quarter, Palantir closed 27 deals up from 18 in the same period last year. Okay. And so from this perspective, looking at, you know, what this person has to say, what do you guys think, right? And so then they also talk about their free cash flow. It says their adjusted free cash flow also sh shows strong growth. And it grew 54.9% year over year, increasing from $96 million to $148 million, which is great. They also go into international revenue, which is something that obviously they can work on. And it says investors should be mindful that over 35% of its revenue comes from outside the U.S. where growth is slower, but hey, they're still making money there. They talk about the S&P inclusion, and they're saying that it's hype. For me, obviously, if you have a stock that's going to be included in the S&P 500, that means new investors are learning about the stock or more about the company financials, their forward guidance, 
what they plan on doing going forward, so forth and so on. Now, here's this person's valuation concern. So they say the key factor in this person's bearish outlook for Palantir is his valuation, which they believe to be relatively overextended despite Palantir's strong fundamentals and potential benefits from his AIP. And then they say, while bullish investors may argue that Palantir is trading below its historical average price earnings and forward price earnings ratios, this argument doesn't hold much weight given the, short, the stock's short trading history and consistently high multiples. Now, he also goes to say this. In his view, the stock's overextended valuation significantly limits its upside potential particularly when compared to other opportunities in the SAAS sector, when Palantir is currently trading at a 4 P ratio that is nearly double the average multiple of its peers. For example, it says the closest peer in terms of valuation CrowdStrike trades at a 4 P ratio of 68.5 X, while Palantir is priced significantly higher and it says the valuation gap exists at a time when the overall SAAS industry has been under significant pressure with multiples contracting across the board. Now, despite this broader trend, Palantir's stock continues to trade at a premium as a result of the hype surrounding its AI capabilities and the S&P 500 inclusion. While some may argue that Palantir deserves this higher premium, Due to its fundamental uh, fundamentals and AIP potential, this person believes that its current valuation makes the stock vulnerable to a potential correction when comparing Palantir's earnings multiples to other SAAS companies such as CrowdStrike, Salesforce, Adobe, which also have strong forward uh, earnings growth rates. The significant valuation gap becomes even more questionable and it says the current environment is no longer the tech bubble era of 2021 when stocks across the board traded at inflatable multiples. Now, most software companies have seen their multiples adjust, but Palantir remains one of the few companies that still command a 2021-like premium. Now, here's what I have to say about this. And and obviously they have a lot more that they have in here, but here is my perspective. I believe the correction already happened, right? And so I'm going to we're going to look at this together, okay? Let's go ahead and and, and look at what's going on here. So here's the chart, okay? I'm going to bring this back so we can look at the. Uh, the stock prices. So I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to go one year out, right? So you mean to tell me this area here wasn't a correction? You think maybe we could go lower? We bring this thing five years out. So from May 20, May of 2022 to June of 2023, we were trading around $8. Was that not the correction or is this person stay like, hey, this thing is way over inflated. And so maybe they think we come back to $20, right? So the question I have for you guys is, do you think $20 is a good cor correction? Do you think $28? Do you think $32? What do you think is a realistic expectation if we were to hit a correction period? Now, for me, I would say around the $23, $22 per share range if a major correction was going to happen, right? And so we know tech stocks, when they have a correction, they have a correction. Think about Meta, for example. That thing was down to $70-something, and then it turned right back around, and now we're what over six hundred dollars per share. I don't I don't remember. Let's look at Meta for example. And I'm saying this not to be bullish at all. I mean bearish. I'm sorry at all. 
But I just want to show you guys what tax stocks do when they correct, like a real correction. So Meta, for example, right? September 21, we're up to 377. This thing went all the way down to $91, which was, it was lower than that. I remember it had hit like $70 or $80 per share. And it came back up um, to its high earlier this year. And then from that particular point, we've been off to the races touching about $600 per share. Okay. Now, as we come back to Palantir, and I just wanted to bring that up as a, as a point. Um, yes, maybe we have a correction at some point. Maybe it's $30, maybe it's $25, maybe it's $22. Nobody knows. But to say we're going to come back to this particular point, I don't, I don't see that. I don't even see 14. Uh, I really don't even see 20. I would say mid to low 20s. But if it went under 22, I would expect that there to be some serious buying going on at that point. Now, for this particular uh, uh, stock price prediction for this week, we want to see if we can get back to 43. Um, and then we can eventually maybe work our way back up into $44 per share. As far as the economic data this week, things look to be pretty quiet. So I think we could potentially have a slow melt up at least around a $44 per share mark as long as no terrible news comes out about Palantir. I think if we have not had the hype leading up to earnings yet, we're going to get there possibly this week. And then maybe everything is already factored in and maybe some selling pressure after earnings is, is kind of what I'm thinking now. If we're going to continue to come to the downside this week, obviously, we would go back to retest $41. If we can't hold $41, now we're looking at this critical level of support at about $39.43. Okay, so these are the areas I'm looking at for this week. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'm out, guys. Peace.